Yeah, so um, we believe it is important to incorporate the covariates into the simulation. For example, your randomization certification factors. Uh, that's outline. So first, motivation. I'll give two examples. Um, second, I'll just go through some technical loads um, which are used in our like source micro. Uh, following that, I'll briefly introduce the implementation of the micro. Finally, I'll demonstrate how to use the micro. Um, the first example is about a simulation and data analysis. Think about if we have study um, in a randomized clinical study, we may, we may have early differential dropout between the active treatment and the control arm. This unbalance may need a bias to the treatment effect to as estimate. To, to evaluate the, this impact, we may um, extend the follow-up time for early dropout patients by simulation. If, uh, if we assume that uh, early dropout patient performs similar as the control arm patient, we can build a model based on control arm data. Then we use, use the parameters from the model to simulate event time for early dropout patients. What we want to emphasize is that it is important to incorporate the covariates into this simulation. Think what we will do if we use lamp parametric approach, for example, bootstrap, to do this simulation. We have two pools. We have one pool for early dropout patient. We have a second pool for patient with a complete follow-up. So for each of the early dropout patient, bootstrap will sample a complete, uh, complete follow-up patient as replacement for this early dropout patient. Intuitively, for better simulation, we want the bootstrap is conditioned on matched patient profile. That is, for each early dropout patient, we want his replacement share similar patient profile. Go back to our parametric approach. By incorporating, um, cover, uh, incorporating covariates into the simulation, what our micro does is actually a parametric version of the bootstrap with the matched patient profile. So that's why the, to incorporate the covariates into the simulation, parametric simulation is important. Second example is about the um, simulation for trial planning purpose. Um, in, um, for example, if we claim we will conduct the primary analysis when we have 200 events, when we already have 70 events, we may ask the question, when will we reach the 200 events? A precise answer will help, will help us to build up timeline and allo allocate resource more efficiently. Um, the, the, sim the approach is basically simple. So we can build a model based on pooled brand data. Then we use parameters to simulate event time for patients still under follow-up. Again, we want to emphasize that if, we, if the simulation incorporates um, predictive or, di or diagnostic covariates, our projection may be more precise. Um, so in this slide and the next couple of slides, I'll just review um, some um, uh, technical loads and survival analysis um, which are used for a micro. So in SARS, PROC life rag is used to model survival data. Um, PROC life rag uses log survival time format. Basically, in the first equation, you can see on the left side, you have log survival time. On the right side, you have your um, covariates, x1 to xk. You also have your coefficients. But sometimes, for some certain distributions, it will be easier to simulate <coughs> survival time if we have log hazard format. That's because survival probability has a simple relationship with cumulative hazard. So if we simulate survival probability, we can just go back to, to ca back calculate the um, event time. The second equation basically is log hazard format. On the left side, you have log hazard. The coefficients from those two formats are different. This slide just gives us the relationship between those um, two sets of coefficients. And once, we, uh, once we have this relationship, re record that uh, 
the coefficients um, for the log survival format can be got from log, 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 a proc life rag um, output. Then the survival probability can be represented with the coefficients directly from um, proc life rag. With all those um, knowledge we just reviewed, it will be straightforward to simulate a survival time. For a given subject who sensor time tau, um, we can consider the survival probability at event time t as t as a uniform distributed random variable within the range of 0 s tau. In the first step, we can just simply draw a sample um, from this uniform distribution as t prime. The second step, we just back calculate the um, survival time. Um, let's just um, talk about how to use this micro. So that's the um, input data set, which basically is a very common regular survival data set. Uh, we have our subject ID, we have the um, survival time, sensor indication. In addition, we have um, covariates. We have categorical covariates. We also have the continuous covariates. Another advantage of our micro is that we don't need too much on the input data set. At most, you only need to create three simple variables. There are two of them are basically flag variables. This MDFLG tells the uh, source micro the subject used for the modeling. The same FLG tells us, uh, the micro uh, the subject who needs um, simulation. In addition, we have to make sure one indicate censoring and zero indicate, indicate um, event. If the original data is not the case, we have to create a third variable to, uh, for this, uh, for this, um, to correct it. After you, after you create those two or three variables, then you can just directly input your data into this micro. So you, you tell all the information to the micro. You give the data set name, subject ID, the categorical variable name, a categorical covariance variable names, continuous covariance names, and also the um, time event, a uh, time variable name, sensor indicator variable name, also tells the micro which model you want to use, a uh, number of simulation, and also the state. Then you are done. So you don't need to worry about anything. What actually happens once we enter the input data set? What actually happened within this micro? Um, is here. Basically, there's four sub, four sub micros. They work sequentially. Um, I just talk about, I will only focus on this um, the second sub micro, which is a palm sampling. This um, sub micro does two things. First, it fits the parametrical model using proc life rag. We will get point estimate of the coefficients and also get estim estimate covariance. covariance. But we cannot directly use a point estimate for the simulation because we'll have to take into consideration of the estimate of variance. That's why we need the second part. The, um, in the second part, we will use the proc same norm to draw samples of the coefficients based on your point estimate and estimate covariance matrix. Then the samples can be used directly for the um, simulation. Um, so that's the output data set. Um, it, it's only two variables that were added. One is the simulated event time. The second is the simulated sensor variable, which is simply straightforward. And uh, so um, I just put the um, Kaplan Meier curve for the original data and the simulated data together in one plot. So the the blue line basically is the uh, original data. The yellow line is the uh, simulated data. I do the simulation 100 times, so totally overlap together with each other. Um, um, we basically were writing a like, manual um, to this journal called the Journal of Statistical Software. So um, we want like, so everyone can use this micro. Again, I just, um, I think that's, I thought it was what, 15 minutes talk, so I only have like, those slides. Um, one more thing, I think I have time to talk about it, the side of story. So um, I, I, I use source a lot for like modeling purpose, your calculation things, but I don't like the plot function of the source. I tried many times, but I still kind of love it. 
so I, I do use like R to do the plot a lot. Um, there's a, I think there's a very smart person, Dr. Xingwei. I think he created a micro called plot R. So you can use this uh, micro to directly write R function within SAS. So what I do is that I just uh, do the calculation modeling things in SAS, your SAS code. Then I just run this um, proc R uh, micro, then put R code within, within the SAS. That's how you got your like, uh, the, the Kaplan-Meier curve I just showed you. Because once you have such like R code ready, it's easy for you to do any manipulation, add like full notes, change the corner of lines, uh, add legend stuff. So um, it's kind of um, convenient. So you can try it if you want. Uh, I think that's everything I have for now. So.